So, when I was in Sunday school, that was a long time ago. I still, well, right now, we don't have Sunday school in this church. But when I was little, um, I went to a Baptist church. And in the Baptist church, we learned a chorus. You probably might know. Moody might have sung this. You have a talent, use it for the Lord. You have a talent, use it for the Lord. If you do not use it, you will surely lose it. You have a talent, use it for the Lord. Anybody learn this? So, so you know, and we were, we were little, and, uh, you know, we would sing this as if we were marching to something, you know. And uh, very early on, very early on, we were taught that God has given each one of us some gift for gifts. And, and, and those are things to be utilized to the glory of God. You know. And, and so, and so um, today, today, Apostle Paul is reminding us that we have all been given this gift. Whether you recognize it or not, whether you realize it or not, you were born with it. Right? You were born with it. So, um, so in other words, Apostle Paul is saying, God's gift or gifts are, are divinely inspired. Right? You okay with that? It's divinely inspired. Um, and, 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 and for God's missional purpose. Not to be pompous about what you have, but, but it is for the mission and purpose of God. And I will elaborate that a little bit later. Um, and so gifts are different than skills. Skills, you go to school, you go for training, right? Um, uh, whereas you become apprentice and you learn some stuff and that becomes your career to make money so that you can live. So that you can be part of the church. See? So, so uh, skills are different. Gifts are divinely, gracefully given to us for missional purpose. Are you with that? Can you handle that? Okay. So, um, there is an Irish... Rock star, his name is Bono. Right? Yes, Bono. Uh, uh, U2. Uh, no, US, what's that? U2, yes. Uh, rock star. You know, he puts out concerts around the world. Uh, he's a pretty famous guy. And, uh, but then he says, you know, that is my job. But I have a mission. And mission for him is, is to help the poorest of the poor in Africa. Do you know that he gives gazillions of money to not just poor, but the poorest of the poor in Africa? Yeah, you didn't know that, see? See, everything is mystery. He, he gives a lot of money to mission of the church. And so this is what he said. This is a quote. Life is not about chasing money. Bono is saying this. It's about chasing the mission. And when you chase the mission... God will go with you. End of quote. 
Isn't that nice? He can be my pastor. You know? So you see, so we, we all have jobs or retired from a job. But we all have a mission and that comes from God. That just tugs you when you see something. Nobody have to tell you. And for no reason, you're crying, right? Because something really, truly moved, moved your soul. And you, and your body is, your emotion is responding to that. Um, so, uh, gifts are given to us by God to dream God's dream. I think I should write a book on that. That's a nice title, right? Uh, um, gifts are given to us to dream God's dream to be blessing to others. Gifts is God's enablement. You know, because we all tend to say, especially, you know, in the past when, when, when we had our annual church conference time, which is church conference is coming on Friday, but in the past in the Methodist church, during this time of the year, nomination committee huddled together in a little room, and then we were cogitating, trying to figure out who do we ask to be in the trustees, who, who do we ask to be in the finance committee, who can be in the admission committee. Remember those days? Yeah. And when we called them, hey, nomination committee met, and we thought you can be a good addition to the trustees. And there's all oh, past today. You know that I don't have any gifts about the trustees. What do they do anyway? You know, kind of stuff. See? And and we 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 just without thinking and wondering our immediate instant reaction is no. Right? Uh, and 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 I'm sure there's a good reason for saying no, but but instantly, you know, those are some things that we say. And we are not the only one who said that. You know, there are a lot of people, great people in the Old Testament, who also said no. Right? They, they just said, oh God, you know, I can't talk to those people. You know? You know, I'm a tongue-tied person. Who said that? Moses said that. He said, you know, this tongue-tied guy to go to Pharaoh and to ask him to release people and, you know, how do I do that? But God said, I am going to give you words. Just be available. It is not God is not telling you to be successful in this matter. But God is telling Moses, just be faithful. Do you see the difference? You know, and uh, God is saying to Moses, just be available. Just be faithful. And I will enable you to do what I'm trying to tell you to do. Right? And so Moses went, sheepishly, let my people go. <laughs> right? Let my people go. No, he should say, let my people go. Right? Because God gave him the authority. So, 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 and, and so he's not the only one in the Old Testament who made those excuses. And so don't feel bad. Right? Um, but I think Apostle Paul is trying to remind Christians that our gifts are more than the skills that we have honed by trainings. 
in Romans chapter 12, verses 6 to 8, this is what Apostle Paul said. He said, among us, some have gift of prophecy. Some have gift of serving. Some have gifts to teach. Some have a gift to exhort people. Some have gift of giving, just giving, generosity. Some have the gift of leadership. Some have the gift of just mercy. It takes a lot to show mercy, isn't it? Then uh, if you go to 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 8 to 10, uh, he elaborates a little more on this one. Some have the word of wisdom. Have you, have you been with somebody who listens to you and then drops the wisdom and you go, wow, I've been waiting for that, right? So there are people who are just wise and they are attuned with God and, and God is speaking and out of their mouth, drop this pearl and then you go that is what I needed to hear because I've been struggling all week right things happen and then he says um, some have the gift of knowledge and I'm sure you've been with people like that some people have this have this 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 gift of faith Nothing can shake them. They're just, they're just sitting on it. And, and, and these are the people who, who loves to move mountain. And that is what Jesus said to his disciples too. If you say to the mountain, it'll move. But you know, these people of faith, they are not asking God, God, okay, would you move the mountain from here to there? No. These people of faith goes out with a shovel and they're shoveling a shovel at a time and moving the mountain. You know, some expect miracle to happen and some just causes miracle to happen. Make sense? And so, and so he goes a little further by saying, some have uh, the gift uh, of healing. Healing. There are. You just pray for somebody, and unbeknown to you, somehow that marvelous God heard your prayer and the person became well. Ha! How about that? And then he says, Some have the, uh, uh, the gift of of miracle. Miraculous things do happen. And it is all over our scripture from the New Test from the Old Testament to the New Testament. And people have no idea what happened, but somehow miracle happened. Right? How do you define that? And then some have uh, the gift of prophecy. They have the gift of prophecy that God is saying something and we are not listening and therefore, right? Remember the Jeremiah I preached? Mm -hmm. And then some have this gift of discernment. That's a beautiful word. Often we do not use. But we, if we came to a junction, a juncture in our lives, trying to make a decision, we need to pause and ask the Spirit of God to help you discern whether I should make a right turn or a left turn or keep going straight. Right? That is a sense of discernment and some have this gifts 
gift of interpretation. You know, sometime when the Spirit of God moves, you have no idea that God took control of your mouth and you are talking. You are saying something. Some might hear that as a gibberish. But God is trying to say something. And somebody sitting there says, you know what? This is God. This is what God is saying. And you go, oh, wow. Right? Gives the goosebump. And so there is another text, the same chapter. And it goes to verses 28 to 30. And this is what Apostle Paul says. Some have the gift of apostles, prophets, teachers, miracle workers, kinds of healings, helping others, gift of tongues. He adds more, you know, and so, and so he adds, and, and I'm sure it is not exhaustive. Apostle Paul did not put all the gifts that could be possible in the New Testament in his writing. And so, and so what he wrote is not exhaustive. Peter, Peter in 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 11, he adds, he adds a little more, a different perspective uh, than the Apostle Paul. And Peter says, whoever speaks, whoever render services, do to the glory of God. Right? So whatever you whatever you do, you try to do. Peter is basically saying, just do it to the glory of God. Okay? So, so what I'm just trying to say is that none of us sitting here can say, I have no gift. I am here to say that, yes, you do. Yes, some people have big gift. And they can do big stuff. Right? And, and uh, it is just wonderful to see when big thing happens and you go, wow, to God be the glory, we say. And then there are majority of us you know, who who does little things, right? And who enjoys doing little things behind the scene? And sometimes people will say, Pastor Dave, I'm just doing this, okay? You don't have to call my name. You don't have to tell anybody else. I just like doing behind the scene. Don't call me out, right? And there are Many of you who do that. And some you will find later on during our fellowship time how many people are in the kitchen who don't want to be recognized. But they just love coming to church on Sunday and does what they do. They make you coffee. They make you lemonade. They make, they bake this, bake that and they bring it out here and they lavish you but they don't want any recognition. Little things. But you know, all the big things that, that we see stands on the little things that we do. I believe in the principle of seed. You know, someday, you know, I might plant a seed and I didn't see it grow and somebody will come and the time was right and just waters a little bit and then boom it blossoms right yeah and so and so uh ministry is just basically that here's a cute story and this might be the end Nobody believes me, but that's I'm trying. So here's a here, here was a here, here was a poor guy. He only had two buckets. 
and he balances those two buckets on a little piece of bamboo on his shoulder and he carries these two buckets. And he goes to the river and fills them up and brings them to the city to sell water. But he's been doing it for a long time. He cannot even afford to buy a new bucket, so the buckets he's been using have holes. But he, I did that too when I was growing up. So this fellow balances the bucket on his shoulder and he brings the buckets and he sells to those who wants it. So, you know, he's been doing this all the time, carrying these buckets and buckets are leaking along the way. He's been doing that for a while. And then one day, those leak buckets have really nourished flowers along the path. And pretty soon, his path has blossomed. There are beautiful flowers, and people are wondering how it all happened, who is taking care of it. And unbeknown to him, unbeknown to everybody, anybody else, it didn't matter. He just brought tremendous smile and color to the community. Sometimes that's how gifts are. You know, we just we just do it because it is just a good thing to do. Because gifts are given uh, to glorify God. Uh, gifts are never meant to be uh, uh, incompatible with somebody else. It is, it is not meant to be compared with somebody else. I have this and they have that and he's got better and better than mine. No, yours is yours, theirs is theirs. It's not meant to compete, but it must complement each other. Okay? It's not about fighting to get what she or he has. No, it's about complementing and working things together. When we complement Together, we have a deeper sense of understanding and camaraderie and acceptance. So, so, um, uh, so all these gifts are given uh, for God's mission. Yeah. And so every year, I think we should be asking ourselves as a congregation, what is God calling us to do? Because we can all be comfortable, right? We can all be comfortable and complacent about whatever. Whatever, right? But whatever cannot grow a church. If you asked growing mega churches, their pastors, if you ask them, is there anyone? One catalyst that help you grow this church. Their answer will be, we are, we are an outward looking church. We are not inward looking church. See the difference? Because we are always missional. We are not just looking inward and having pity party or grabbing about what we don't have. But we are always asking, who can we engage with? Who is not here yet? Does it make sense? How do we engage with people who are not here yet? So here is my solution. Just one. So November 8, November 18, one week before Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving is 21st. No, 24th. 
So, we are a week ahead. We are going to have international Thanksgiving potluck at 5 o'clock. Somebody likes food. Okay? So here is, here is rationale behind. We are not advertising it like we did with the Polynesian luau. And this will be inside. I want you all to invite a person or two or three or ten to the potluck. If you invite somebody, don't expect them to cook something. Because they are going to be our guests. Okay? You bring them and introduce them to a couple of people in the life of the church. And see, they experience the same joy, you know, amongst us. Right? If there's a fire in the belly, they should feel it. Are you with me on this one? If you have fire in your belly, whoever guests we invite should feel it. And they should be able to say, gosh, you people are happy people. I want to become part of this church. And you will say, thank you very much. Next week, I'm going to introduce you to our pastor. And then, ta-da, I showed up. <laughs> See, so this is, this is a very silent, friendly, non-intimidating evangelism. And this one thing that we do so well. You are a good evangelist for a, for a grocery store. You are a good evangelist for a restaurant that you ate out there. You are a good evangelist for emergency care facility out there. You are a good evangelist for a dentistry out there. You are telling your friends. No cost to you. You are so happy to tell them. Why can't we do that for, for our church? Unless you think we are not doing great. If you're excited about what we are doing, I think you should be able to say, guess what? This is what is going on in our church, and I want you to come, and you will be my guest. That's what evangelism is. That is how people grow a church, right? And so, November 18, 5 o'clock, we're going to have the traditional turkey and ham. We all came to this country from somewhere. I'm sure you have inherited a recipe from your great-grandparents or parents. Cook a little one. Cook something. And tell us what it is. Hmm? Let's share it. Let's have fun. We are inviting some other international students from seminaries, and hopefully they will cook as well, and I'm asking them to explain the food and tell us their story and maybe even sing for us. So it is just going to be a glorious time. I think you and I should practice some John Denver music or something. <laughs> Let's do some country home or whatever, those kinds of stuff. Um, and I think, I think it's okay for us to get together and have fun. Okay? And so, November 18, that is our plan. And uh, I'm giving you uh, a missional challenge. Uh, do what you can. Uh, and uh, make some lives happy. And bring glory to God. Amen? That's the end of my sermon. Thank God.